This is Coach Lee. And I'm talking with my dear friend, our certified stuttering therapist and great aide de camp of World Stuttering Association, Javier <laughs> from Spain. That's it. <laughs> and Javier and I are talking about a very unusual subject. Unusual in the sense that it is rarely the subject of a coaching session. Mm -hmm. It relates to the aftermath of stopping stuttering. Now, I met Javier how many years ago? Oof, let me think. I believe we met in in 2018 or so. Okay, let's call that. That's as good a guess as any. And this is the nearing the end of 2024. So mm -hmm. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I've known you six years. And when first we met, you had been stuttering since you were very young on most words that you said mm -hmm. in most conversations, if not all, and yeah. maybe all, that you had. Is that roughly true? Of course, yeah. And you were very unhappy with that. And I was, you were referred to me by somebody, a classmate of yours, mm -hmm. that helped beat his stuttering from Florida. Mm -hmm. so had to work. And after a certain number of months, I don't remember how many, you basically stopped stuttering. And you stopped appearing to be speech disabled in your conversations as a general rule, which is not to say you didn't stutter on occasion, uh, but it wasn't enough to appear speech disabled uh, in most situations. Now, as you are aware more than most, when, when you stop stuttering, Fear doesn't, fear of speech doesn't, doesn't die. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a very slow death process and it takes a long time because the habit is still, still wants to emerge. And so periodically when you speak under pressure, which of course changes from day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, whatever, uh, but it's, typically to groups or phones or strangers or something or authority figures, but it moves around for different people. It's different things and it comes and it goes and it's unpredictable. And so the fear is there. And when you feel pressure, you have a tendency to think words and maneuver around them. You do maneuver around them successfully, but it creates a form of halting speech. Uh, it isn't smooth speech. I call it choppy speech under pressure. Is that generally true? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the subject of this conversation, and I have never had this conversation, specifically this conversation, with anyone else. Why not? Because most people leave me or I quit coaching them before they reach a chop level. And a lot of them don't chop because they didn't stutter as severely as you. They don't have as much to overcome as mm -hmm. you as you have, and including yours truly. I mean, I was a situational stutterer and I could not talk in some situations, but in many situations I talked as though I do today. So it, I was a different situation than you. Nonetheless, at times suicidal about it because it threatened my career and lots of other things. But truthfully, it wasn't 80, 90, 95% of my speech. It was, I don't know what it was, a third? I, have, I don't know. It's been, it's over 50 years now. But in any event, I'm not the subject here. But most people, I'm only the subject to the point that I'm more typical 
of stutterers and the stutterers with whom we deal. You were in the in the in the ninety ninety percent of or percentile of severity mm -hmm. um, type and severity of stuttering that we deal with, and yeah. we've had a few others. I have a handful of them, half a dozen, I don't know, 10, I don't know. And they beat it, all but one beat it. No, one is our medical doctor from Tunisia, mm -hmm. who tells me that he, he can talk to anybody but me. <laughs> but that's not, <laughs> that's not good enough. I'm sorry. We have to be, talk to everybody. So uh, I've only... I've only dealt, I, I haven't dealt with, nobody's stuck around long enough for me to hear them if they're chopping. And chopping is not appearing speech disabled. It might on a rare occasion, but it's generally not. And it's, but it's nonetheless irritating. So, mm -hmm. Choppiness is caused by the same thing that causes all stuttering, hesitating, thinking a word, fearing it, and forcing it. And any stutterer or ex-stutterer can do that in a split second, in a fraction, in a nanosecond, in a millisecond. They can do it in all four things simultaneously. But you got to do them all. And if you don't hesitate, going to job. And if you don't think a word, you're not going to job. And if you don't fear it, you're not going to job. And if you don't force it, you're not going to job. So the question then becomes, how can Javier avoid a job? Now, I'm going to talk to Javier here in a second, ask him questions. And he may or may not chop because sometimes he does job and sometimes he doesn't job. So that's just the way that is. It's an unpredictable and ridiculous beast. We're going to get rid of it regardless. Okay, so tell me, where do you, you chop when you feel under pressure, is that correct? Yep. And when, at this point in your life, do you feel under pressure? Mostly speaking to strangers on the phone. That, that would be my... I think that's my worst situation. Okay. Strangers and phone. How about Sam meetings? No. I mean, I may chop in a word here and there, but it's not like a high pressure situation. Okay. All right. What do you do? on a daily basis to try and end your feelings of pressure? Well, I give myself affirmations once a day in the morning. Um, I have a speech plan, consists mainly on holding my tones in short increments and there are days in which i read aloud and there are days in which i don't okay now before we started this recording my reaction to the chopping when you used the word pressure was if i were you I mean, I've already done this for myself. Yeah. I have convinced myself that the second I feel pressure, I go into Lee's oratorical, most eloquent speech mode. I speak like a king. Mm -hmm. I convert. The pedal goes to the metal. I sh it's like I hit snow or ice. I go into low gear in my car to make the wheels dig in, but they don't spin. And I dig in 
and become an even better speaker. Now, can you tell me what Crutchell 11 speaking like a king is? What, it, what do you think it is? Yes, well, it has a lot of elements. Um, they are speak slowly, pronunciation, lots of stops, speak softer, smile. And I'm not sure if I have anything left over there. No, the, the last one is stops, but you put it yeah. in earlier. Mm -hmm. in earlier. Um, slow, slowly, I speak slowly. Extreme pronunciation of all words and syllables. Can you do that? Say something to me using extreme pronunciation. Okay, well, I missed the last Sam meeting because my wife and I went to Italy to a friend's wedding. Okay. I submit to you, Mr. Alcazar Cortazar, <laughs> that when you use extreme pronunciation, you conquer the chop with that method alone. Mm. but you cannot hold back on it one millimeter. You must pronounce every syllable of every word, one word you left out of your definition of speaking like a king was critical. And that word was passion, feeling, message. You said slow pronunciation, stop, softer, and smile. That's what you said. All right. And what you should have said is slow, pronunciation, passion, smile, and stop. Now, while I do believe that if you thought nothing but pronunciation, you would not chop ever again. Your mind can't do two tricks at once. It's a one trick pony, one at a time. Mm. When you fully commit to pronunciation, you obliterate, you block the stutter habit. It's like stiff arming a tackler. Bang! He falls to the turf and you run free. Hmm. Same thing. Now, some people just smiling accomplishes the same thing. Some people just speaking slowly accomplishes the same thing. Because it takes focus to really slow down. And some people who smile, mock stuttering. Now, the thing above all that blocks stuttering more than anything else is passion. Thinking about the message. Isn't it interesting? 
that you, as good a coach as you are, and you are, for God at work. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) What is it you've heard me say, I know, so many times at Sam meetings? Yeah. If you can think the message enough. And how to say the message like you mean it. That's passion. If you can think the message and how to say it, you're done. Now, I submit to you that you don't do that when you're under pressure or anything close to it. You don't think pronunciation. You don't think smile. You don't think message. You don't think how to say it. You're not passionate. Your mind gets taken over by the stutter guy. He's in charge. What's left of it? There's not much left of him, but he's still hanging around. (laughs) And we got to put him out of his misery and get rid of him once and for all. Because I want you talking just like I do. And Ringo, she does. And Clifton does. Why do they do that? They never stuttered as much as you did. Mm -hmm. I didn't either. It is simply easier for us to accomplish this than it is for you. But there is nothing that prevents you from accomplishing it. And you've got to do it. You've got to be tough mentally with yourself. You've got to be a speech cop. It's You say, well, my speech is pretty good. Everybody thinks I'm a pretty good speaker and they're happy with my speech. I know that. That's not the point. We yeah, want you sure. under pressure to be an orator. Mm. We want you to rise way above your normal level and be a superb speaker under pressure. That is where you excel. Now, send me your affirmations, email me your affirmations again. Okay. I, and I will look at them, and if I have any suggestions, I will make them and return them. Mm-hmm. But the main thing I want to do today is a little bit of reading aloud with you, because that is a great way to test, for me to test your level of passion, your Mm -hmm. level of commitment to the message, your level of commitment to how you can say things in a more effective, in a a positive, as you know, we only, this only applies to positive feelings and emotions. It does not apply to negative emotions because they get us in trouble and negative emotions we try to keep to ourselves and clean them up until they are, we are gonna reformat them in a positive way somehow. And then we bring them out. We don't let them out otherwise because we hurt things, we hurt people, and above all, we hurt ourselves when we're negative. Every single time, every time, no exception, I don't care how long you live, you will never beat that rap. No human being can beat it. We pay, as as the great philosopher once said, we are not punctuated, we are not punished uh, for our anger, we are punished by our anger. I think it was Gandhi who said that, I could look it up, but that is the fact, that is a fact of the matter. We pay for our anger big time, buddy. And most of us are angry, and we shouldn't be. And so the the, the name of the game here, this is all about being an actor in the sense of conveying the feeling of the words. I realize you haven't seen this before. You you probably never even heard it. It's a wonderful song. Mm -hmm. I can send you the link to it if you're interested as well to listen to. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think you would enjoy it. 
Okay. It's, it happens to be one of the things, one of the great things that asthma did is what she picked for this young man to read aloud were, were very interesting. The mm-hmm. choice of a 19 year old girl, you know, college student, what does she pick? And this was one of the things she picked. May You Always by Larry Mark and Dick Charles, a very famous song in the 1950s and 60s. That's how old it is, and, but asthma picked it. So I think that's very interesting. <laughs> so, okay, so <clears throat> read me this song, poem, it's both, and tell okay. me, it's, right. it makes me believe it. May you always walk in sunshine, slumber warm when night winds blow. May you always live with laughter, for a smile becomes you so. May good fortune find your doorway. May the bluebird sing your song. May no trouble trouble your way. May no worry stay too long. May your heartaches be forgotten. May no tears be spilled. May all the acquaintance be remembered and your cup of kindness filled. And may you always be a dreamer. May your fondest wish come true. Glad you found someone to love who made your dreams come true. And may you always be a dreamer. May your wildest dream come true. May you find someone to love as much as I love you. Now, that was extremely well done. Number one, uh, there was no sign whatsoever of a chop or any kind of speech problem ever. No (laughs) sign whatsoever. Secondly, your pace was extremely good. Mm-hmm. And even mm-hmm. though you hadn't seen it before, you 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 showed great understanding of the words. And for the most part, you read them in a way that made them compelling to the listener. I can't improve on that uh, much, if at all, but I'll read it simply to show a slightly different interpretation Mm -hmm. and illustrating some of the same points for anyone who might ever listen to this video. May you always walk in sunshine, slumber warm when night winds blow. May you always live with laughter for a smile becomes you so. May good fortune find your doorway. May the bluebird sing your song. May no trouble travel your way. May no worry stay too long. May your heartaches be forgotten. May no tears be spilled. May old acquaintance be remembered and your cup of kindness filled. And may you always be a dreamer. May your fondest wish come true. Glad you found someone to love who made your dreams come true. And may you always be a dreamer. May your wildest dream come true. May you find someone to love as much as I love you. Isn't that beautiful? It is. It is. Mm. 
and there a little 19 year old asthma picked this <laughs> to read to her 17 year old student. Mm. Terrific. <laughs> Terrific. But Javi, yeah. when you read this, there is zero sign that you ever had any speech problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that, Javi? Well, it is, I'm going to use your own words, the ones you say a thousand times in the SAM meetings. Thing message. <laughs> it's letting go yeah. completely. It's a full born commitment to the mission, to the message, and how you can say it. Now, Javier, you need to practice more crutch 11. Hmm. Slow pronunciation, passion, smile, and stop. Every one of those elements you need to work on, especially passion. Saying the message, how in a way that conveys it to the max. That single thought overcomes all speech issues. But you have not mastered that thought yet under pressure. Mm -hmm. So you need to, your, your affirmations need to be directed at pressure and the message <clears throat> and how to say it like you mean it with, with and with joy the smile conveys the joy and this song you know mm. tells us so may you always live with laughter for a smile becomes you so. Well, a smile becomes most of us, Javi. <laughs> and when we smile, it's internally, it's like taking a shot of joy. <laughs> and few of us do it enough. I am not political. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I have strong opinions about government and so forth. I do believe the least government is the best government. And without getting into which candidate I prefer, mm -hmm. Harris versus Trump in the US, I'm going to give, I got to give Harris one big positive round of applause for one thing. She almost never stops smiling. That is she waves her smile with a laugh. Mm -hmm. And God bless her. She's a wonderful dresser. Having said that, I don't agree with most <laughs> of what she says, but the reality or doesn't say. Yeah. I'm concerned of most. But the fact of the matter is, she is an exemplar of joy when she's in the room. Mm -hmm. True. Hats off. You know, nobody's all bad, nobody's all good. We're all parfaits trying to do the best we can. And she's another parfait. And in this respect, she's way out in front of me, way out in front of you. She's way out in front of maybe anybody I know. <laughs> you know, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. So. Good for you, Camilla Harris, and may your smile infect millions of people in a positive way. I hope that you'll also learn something about the law. Um, I don't, you know, Javi, I don't think we need to talk any more about this right now. Okay. Uh, I, 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 but I think the job is your job. It is your right. job, Javi to convert pressure into your best speech. 
and you should not settle for anything less. Mm -hmm. Why should you? You don't have to. Don't Don't hold back. (laughs) If you think I'm an orator or anything close to it, I'm not doing anything you can't do. But you got to reach for it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come to you. You're going to have to reach for it. You got to climb a few steps on your ladder to get there. That's all you got to do. You got to view pressure as the opportunity you've been waiting for all all day long. You can't wait Mm -hmm. to speak under pressure. You love the oh, bring it on me. (laughs) That's when I exert my best abilities. I'm like a tennis star. I play okay in practice, but you should see me in a game. <laughs> That's the way we do it, Javi. Mm. It's fun, Javi. And even though one of the great ironies of your life, strange twist to the Javier story, is he married a girl, a beautiful girl, who had a brain tumor and when it was operated on, she lost her hearing. Mm-hmm. And Javier married her in spite of that. And ironically, this girl heard Javier stutter more than she ever heard him be fluent because he was in the process of converting to fluency. Mm-hmm. This happened. So in the great twist of irony, his, his girl, now his wife, has never really heard how eloquently he could read May You Always. <laughs> yeah, it is true. She never heard that. But this doesn't alter the fact that other people do. Mm-hmm. And in time, she will know it because other people are going to tell her about it. And there's no limit to how eloquent you can be. Stop thinking about your past as a stutterer. It's history, Javi. You don't have to accept it. You don't. You're not going to. You're going to be an exemplar to all your students and to everybody who knows you. You're going to love to speak and speak with beauty and joy and passion all the time. No exceptions. And you're going to do your very best under pressure. Have a great day, Javi. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah, sure. Okay. (laughs) Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Listen to it. (laughs) Okay. Bye-bye.